Uh, you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for a lot of things. I'm thankful I'm saved. Amen? Good to be saved. But I'm also thankful uh, that uh, we don't sing songs around here like they're dirges. We sing songs around here like they're joyful. And uh, that's the way it ought to be. Amen? As Christians. You want to get really frustrated? Go down south and, and see how some of those folks sing songs. I, I'm sure they don't all do it. But enough of them do it. Oh, I was really in for a shock when I went to Bible college. And uh, I heard uh, we sang, I serve a risen Savior. And the guy got up and he, and he started off the song. I serve a risen Savior. And I wanted to say, get him up out of the grave. Come on, let's go. <laughs> you know, is he risen or isn't he? Uh, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, I'm thankful we, we sing with a little pep around here, and that's a good thing. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of John, chapter 14. John 14. We're going to be continuing our study on how to study the Bible. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and the part that he plays in your personal Bible reading and study. While, while uh, you're turning there, let me, let me give something I, I found. It's short, but I thought it was good. If you must speed on the highway, you may want to sing these as you do. 45 miles per hour, God will take care of you. 55 miles per hour, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. 65 miles per hour, nearer my God to thee. 75 miles per hour, per hour, nearer, still nearer, uh, 85 miles per hour, this world is not my home, <laughs> 95 miles per hour, Lord, I'm coming home, and 100 miles per hour, precious memories, <laughs> precious memories, how they linger, all right, let's all stand together if you would, you know what, it is hot up here, whoa, is it hot down there? Is it hot down there? Okay. Um, Jerry, would you go back and just check the, check the thermostat? I don't know. Maybe the thing is up to 105 or something. It feels like it up here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> it is warm. All right. You're in uh, John 14. At least you should be. And we'll read uh, verses 16 down through 26. This is a, a, a section. Actually, it's a classic key section, classic key chapter having to do with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus talked to his disciples before he left and told them that the Comforter was going to come. Verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou, uh, that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, it's good to be with your people. Uh, Lord, in this church, uh, in this building, 
It's good to have heat. We've got a little, little more than what we asked for tonight, but thank you. Thank you, Lord. Help us not to, to be complainers. Help us just appreciate the fact we've got heat. It sure is better than standing out in the parking lot. And uh, so I, I thank you for what you've provided for us. And uh, Father, I pray that you'd provide for us some wisdom, some understanding, some knowledge as we look at your, your word and see what part the Holy Spirit of God has when we read and study our Bibles. We ask God that you would uh, enlighten our eyes, open our eyes of understanding. Help us to behold some things and be a blessing and be a help to us tonight. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. As I said, this is a, a key chapter, and particularly this passage uh, on, the, on the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, verse 16 says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. I find that's interesting. He said another comforter. In other words, he was the comforter while he was there, but then when, the Holy, when he left, the Holy Spirit uh, took his place and went in them and uh, was, uh, was the comforter. But it says, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, his title is comforter. And yet, as we go down through here, we'll find that, that uh, he's, he's essential in understanding the Bible. He's essential in leading us to what is true and what is right. And that tells me that, that the comforter uses the word of God in order to give us the comfort that we need. And, you know, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard testimonies, many of them throughout the years here, of folks that have gone through difficulty, gone through problems, gone, gone through struggles, uh, gone through COVID, whatever it might be. And uh, uh, you've, you've said, you know, the Lord gave me this verse, the Lord gave me that verse. Well, you know what it was? It was the Holy Spirit of God leading you and guiding you to verses that were a blessing to you. And we're a help to you during, during your, your difficulty. And that, that's exactly how he does it. That's one of the reasons why he's called the comforter. Down in verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. It says he's the spirit of truth. And in John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if he's the spirit of truth, uh, he's going to bring the truth to you. He's going to open your eyes to the truth as you read the word of God. And notice the first part of the verse says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Uh, unsaved people do not have the Holy Spirit of God. Until you get saved, you're not going to have the Spirit of God. And so don't expect unsaved people to understand the intricacies of the Word of God. When I, when I have unsaved people ask me questions other than salvation questions, I'm, I'm, I'm rather hesitant to give them an answer because they don't have the Spirit of God. And because they don't have the Spirit of God, they're not going to have an understanding of what you're talking about. Have you ever tried to explain from the Bible, okay, uh, from the Bible, a standard, a personal a separation standard that you might have uh, because you want to stay separate from the world? You try to explain that to a lost person. They just don't get it. They don't see it. And you say, well, it's because they're not saved. That's true, but on top of that, because they're not saved, they also don't have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit of God uh, can't enlighten their eyes, can't open their eyes, because they, they don't have the Spirit of God themselves. And that's why, that's why, you know, don't expect the world to get Bible truth. Don't expect them to get it. Uh, outside of salvation, they're going to they're gonna struggle with it. Then drop with me down to verse 26. This is, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I, I have said unto you. We're looking tonight at the Holy Spirit as the teacher. And if you're going to learn something from the Word of God, you're going to learn it because the Spirit of God's going to reveal it to you. The Spirit of God's going to 
teach it to you because the Spirit of God is a teacher. He teaches us all things that are related to truth. Uh, verses, if you look with me, verses, uh, well, I'll just look at them, verses 21 through, through 25, it, it, emphasizes, it emphasizes keeping the commandments. Verse 21 says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And again, uh, it's so important to look at things in context. Sometimes we, we have a tendency, and I know I have this tendency. Uh, I had this tendency when I was studying for this, for this lesson. Uh, to look at the Holy Spirit uh, verses is one thing, and look at these verses about, about uh, uh, knowing the Word of God and then obeying the Word of God as another complete different section. No, they're all integrated. And it's the Holy Spirit of God that shows you what the truth is, and then he empowers you and enables you to be able to live that very truth that he revealed unto you. I think God's so good. He not only shows us what we're supposed to do, but then when he shows it to us, he doesn't expect us to do it in our own power. He doesn't expect us to do it in our own strength. He gives us strength and power and understanding in order to get the job done. He says, I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou uh, wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? But Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Uh, he, that loveth me, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. And he emphasizes here having the, the, the truth, but then also keeping the truth. And particularly his commandments, and of course that's just simple obedience. In verse 21, uh, by the Spirit, Jesus manifests or reveals himself to us as we respond to loving him and we respond to the commandments that he gives us. And again, this all has to do with, you'll, you'll understand more Bible, you'll be able to see Christ in the Bible more plainly and more clearly uh, when, when you obey because then the Spirit of God will enlighten you, the Spirit of God will open up your eyes and you'll be able to see things. Learning the Bible is dependent more on attitude than it is aptitude. In other words, it's not up here, it's down here. You know, someone might say, I, I've actually heard people over the years say, well, I, I have a hard time uh, understanding the Bible because I'm not very smart. You know, it has nothing to do with how much brain power you've got. It's got everything to do with how you approach the Word of God and what your attitude is toward the Word of God. And in verse 21, it says, it says uh, he'll, he'll uh, love him, uh, he'll love a, a person and manifest himself to a person who loves God and keeps his commandments. That's, that is not a cerebral thing. That's a heart thing. That's a heart thing. And uh, that's, that's exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about the attitude, how right and close you are to God uh, 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 makes the difference on how much Bible you can understand. Uh, the closer you are to God, the easier God can teach you, and the easier the Holy Spirit can, can guide you unto truth. He'll teach you all things, it says, and he'll remind you of those things. So bring those things later into remembrance. If you, you learn anything from Scripture, it's because... The Spirit of God taught you. Now, praise the Lord for preachers, teachers, uh, people that can communicate the Word of God. I appreciate that. But the Spirit of God has got to be in it. And you can have the best communicator all, in all the world uh, explaining a truth out of the Bible. And, and I, I, I've seen this happen. I, I've seen folks uh, uh, in, a, in a service and uh, somebody will say, boy, that sure was a good message. What a blessing. And somebody else will say, well, I didn't get a thing out of that one. 
Well, what's the difference? The difference is the heart, okay? If the heart's in the right spot, you know, like I said the other day, you can, you can get a blessing on just about anything, but, but uh, as the, the Spirit of God leads you and guides you into truth, uh, he'll, he'll show you some things, and, uh, and you can get a blessing. Uh, again, if you learn the Scriptures, it's not because, not just, you might have a good teacher, and that's good. You might have someone who uh, you listen to a message and you got something a little bit clearer, and that's, that's a blessing. But understand, you wouldn't have gotten anything had not the Holy Spirit of God opened your eyes of understanding so that you could behold the truth. The, the Spirit takes God's words and applies them to our hearts. Um, boy, it's one thing that I have seen uh, so clear over the years is that you can... Uh, in, any preacher can preach a message and it will hit people, you know, in so many different ways. Now, it has nothing to do with just the individual's life. Sometimes we think, well, it hit them this way because they're going through this. Uh, that may be part of it, but you know what? If the Spirit of God doesn't bring it home, it's not going to hit them at all. And so understand, it is the Spirit of And the reason why I'm telling you this is, I think sometimes we approach the Bible independent of God. We approach, uh, approach the Bible independent of the Holy Spirit. We don't have a cognizant dependence upon Him. Uh, when was the last time, and, and don't raise your hand or smile or anything, but when was the last time that you, you approached your Bible and said, Lord, if you don't show me something out of this book today, I'm going to come up, I'm going to come away from it empty. Well, what is that kind of a prayer? That's a prayer that says, I depend upon the Spirit of God in order to get understanding from this book. And that's really, that's what he wants from us. Go to uh, John 16, page or two in your Bible. John 16. So the Bible says that he will lead us. Uh, that one's dead. Let's try this one. Ah, that's better. <laughs> now all I got to do is learn how to write. Uh, lead and guide us into truth. And along with that, he'll remind us of things. He'll remind us. He'll bring things back to our memory. Um, I had it happen today when I was preparing this lesson. And uh, I thought, I thought of, of, of a couple of, of scriptures and the Lord brought to my mind, what about this and what about that? And put the things together. What was that? Well, that was God bringing back to my memory something I'd already studied, something that I'd already, already looked at, I'd spent time in, but he brought it back to my memory and he linked it. Boy, I love it. You know what? Whenever that kind of thing happens, let, let me caution you, okay? Don't take credit for that stuff. Look what I found in the scripture. <laughs> and some, and some, I think we all do it at one time or another. But, we, you know, we think, whoa, wow, I found this. Uh, you found that because the Holy Spirit of God pointed it out to you. It wasn't you, pal. It was, it was God, the, the, the Holy Spirit, who led you and guided you into truth. And we need to, we need to remember that and keep that in mind. Look, look down in verses 13 and 14 of chapter 16 of the book of John. 13 and 14 says, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will sh show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. One of the jobs that the Holy Spirit has is to make a big deal out of Jesus Christ. 
And when a person claims to be filled with the Spirit, but it talks nothing, very, very little about Christ, but the Spirit this, the Spirit that, the Spirit this, the Spirit that, you can chalk that off as not being of the Spirit, because that isn't what the Spirit does. He doesn't bring attention first and foremost to himself. He brings attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says that the Spirit of God will lead you and guide you into all truth. If you fall into error, you weren't following the Spirit's, the Spirit's guidance. That's just the bottom line. You weren't following the Holy Spirit of God if you go into error. The Bible says, uh, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He will guide you to truth, and the truth is always found in the word of God. Go with me to, to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. In Luke 24, look down in verses 44 and 45. Luke 24, 44 and 45. And he said unto them, he's speaking to the 11 that are left, the 11 disciples. Judas has already gone out and hung himself. Verse 44 says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then it says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Uh, up until that point they couldn't. But when he opened their understanding, they could. That's the, that's the ministry that the Holy Spirit has today. Uh, he has the, the ministry of opening our understanding of Scripture. Take your Bibles and turn with me over to Psalm 119. And that was the prayer that the psalmist had, Psalm 119. And it's, Psalm 119 is a psalm that is almost entirely about the Word of God. I think there is, uh, I think I counted five last time through. I think there's four or five uh, verses that don't have the Word of God in one form or another mentioned in them. But uh, in, in Psalm 119, look down at verse 8. No, that's not right. That's not what I want. What did I want? Ah, try 18. Is that what it is? Yes, that's what I want. Thank you. 18. Whew. I'm glad somebody's paying attention because obviously I wasn't. All right, let me just put that down there so I don't make the same mistake twice if I ever teach this again. So, Psalm 119, verse 18 says, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The psalmist was praying to God and understanding that on his own he couldn't understand some things. On his own he wouldn't see some things. So he cried out to God and said, Open thou my understanding that I might understand thing, wondrous things out of thy word. And that ought to be our attitude toward the Holy Spirit of God. When we come to the word of God in Bible study, we come to the word of God in just Bible reading. Ask God to open your eyes. And ask him to, to show you wonderful things uh, out of the book. The understanding that we obtain from the Spirit of God depends on our attitude toward God and his word. It doesn't, again, it doesn't depend upon how much mental capacity you have. It depends upon what kind of heart you have toward the word of God and the God of the word. Go back with me to Luke 23. Luke 23, and verses 8 and 9. Luke 23, verses 8 and 9. I find this interesting. In verse 8, this is Jesus before Herod, just before the crucifixion. And he says, And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him, of a long season because he had heard many things of him 
and he hoped to have, have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. So Jesus stood before Herod, and Herod, Herod asked him all kinds of questions. Jesus Christ just stared at him. He did not say a word. Why? Throw that to you. Why? Why? Why didn't he answer? Why, why did he just, you know, he, he asked him questions and he just looked at him. He refused to answer. Yes. Okay. Okay. He won't, he won't use it properly. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Say that again. Okay, he was fulfilling scripture, but he could have he could have done that too just on the cross. Is there any other reason why he didn't answer Herod? Can you think of any? Dave, David. Okay. So at the very least, at best, Herod, Herod or was going to take another question. And even Pilate asked him, and he answered him and said, Thou sayest this, which we have in verse 3. He answered his question with just his words right back at him again. Okay. So Christ does not generally in his dealings of answering questions with any greatness. Okay. Wise in his own conceits. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, they say opposite things for different reasons. Michael Lamb. Okay. Okay, to bounce off of that, what was Herod's heart at that point? Did Herod really want truth? No, no, he didn't. Uh, was Herod just curious? Yeah. Uh, did he want to see him do some great miracle or, or do something that would pop his eyes out? Yeah. Uh, you know, he was looking at him like a sideshow. Uh, he did not have a, a heart that it was inquiring of truth. That's the kind of heart you've got to have. Uh, you've got to have a heart that's inquiring of truth, is what I mean, uh, when you come to the Word of God. And that's why it's important. You know, he, he asked him some questions, didn't give him any answers. But you know what? You can ask God some questions, and as you open up your Word of God, He'll give you the answers, if your heart's in the right place. And again, the bottom line, is what is your attitude in coming to the Word of God? Are you dependent upon the Holy Spirit of God in your Bible study? Uh, go to the book of John, chapter 21. John 21. I find this an amazing, amazing couple of verses. John 21 and uh, look down in verses uh, 24 and 25, last two verses in the book. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, speaking of John, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now, do you realize how huge of a statement that is? <laughs> it says that you could not write down in enough books 
all of the things that Jesus Christ did and all of the things that Jesus Christ said while he was on this earth, since you couldn't do it. That's how much stuff he did. That's how much he said. And yet, what have you got? You've got the selected words by the Spirit of God himself. That's exactly right there what God wanted you and I to have. Nothing more, nothing less. Right there, all of what God wanted us to have. There's, there's so many things that could have been written, but God gave us what, what should have been and needed to be written for us. It's exactly what he wants us to have. It's exactly what he wants us to need. You have a book, there's a word that's been floating around a lot lately with this COVID thing, essentials, you know, essentials. You know what you got? You got the essentials right here. You got the essentials. Uh, we only have, have you ever heard this, this phrase? Well, brother, you know, I think we need to push some doctrinal things aside and, and, and just be able to just agree on the essentials. You know what the essentials are? <laughs> Everything is written in this book. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable. How much of it? All of it. Every single bit of it. You get a hold of that and, and I don't know how you can come to any other conclusion but the conclusion that God has his word preserved exactly the way we ought to have it today. And, and you have it in your King James Bible. You've got it. That's, that's God's word that was given by inspiration and has been preserved for you. You've got to have that. Uh, if, you, if you don't, that's why it's important to have, uh, to have the concept of an exact every word Bible. Uh, you've, you've got to have that. Uh, Otherwise, otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. That was really the, the concept that God got into my heart. Uh, I, I made the decision. I, I, God led me to the point where I realized that we had the preserved word of God in our language, in our King James Bible. And I, I came to that, that realization because I knew that God had called me to preach. Well, if I'm going to go out and preach... I've got to preach what God said. And if all I have is the basic ideas of what God said, and that's really where, they, where they, the conclusion they come to, you have the ideas, you don't have the exact words. You better have the exact words, because if you don't have the exact words, you don't have the right ideas. It won't be right. It just won't be right. And uh, so it's important to have an exact every word Bible, and I have that in my King James Bible. Look, look with me at the book of uh, Luke, chapter 24. Luke, chapter 24. And the Spirit of God leads us and guides us into truth as we, as we, we read and study our Bibles and become dependent on Him, understanding that that uh, uh, without him, you know, Jesus said, without me, you can do what? Nothing. You're not going to be able to understand that book on your own. You can't, you can't get out of it what you need to get out of it if God doesn't give it to you. And we need, we need to just have that utter dependency on him every time we come to it. Luke chapter 24 and verse 5. Uh, excuse me, 25. Luke 24, verse 25. It says, then he said unto them, O fools, and he's speaking to the disciples, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Uh, then uh, in verse 24, he says, and certain of them which were, were, were with us went to the sepulcher and found it, even as the woman had said, but him they saw not. And then he called them fools, and he called them slow of heart to believe. That's the problem. That's the problem. We're slow of heart to believe. And when you're slow of heart to, to believe, the Spirit of God can't show you anything. You can have the very words of God and not be able to get the benefit from them 
just simply because we're slow of heart to believe. The heart's the key. It, again, it's not the mental capacity or the lack of a higher education. Um, again, I, when I went to Bible college, basically I was taught this by most of the professors, not all of them. But most of the professors taught me, in, in essence, if you don't have a higher, under, uh, higher education, you cannot understand this book. And if you can't understand this book, you're going to be a lousy preacher because you won't be able to impart to your people what the truths of the Word of God are. What they did was they made it a head issue rather than a heart issue. You know what? Understanding the Word of God never has been, never will be a head issue. It's a heart issue. And the, the, problem, the problem is and not that we don't know what it says. The problem is we don't believe it. We, we don't trust it. We don't trust, trust God for it. There's, there's uh, three essentials. Three essentials when studying your Bible. When it comes to the Spirit of God. First of all, the Holy Spirit himself. Holy Spirit himself. If you don't get anything else out of this study tonight, get this. When you go to your Bible, you must depend upon the Spirit of God to give you something. Have you ever read through your, uh, through your, your Bible reading for the day, whatever it might be? And when you're all done, say, man, I didn't get a thing out of that. I've done that. You know what else I didn't do? I didn't go to God and say, God, would you please give me something? Lord, I desperately need something. I, I need you to speak to my heart. Truth of the matter is, that's true every day of our lives. You have no idea... You're reading your Bible in the morning, you have no idea what you're going to hit before noon. You have no idea, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you have no idea what you're going to hit by 5 o'clock that afternoon. You have, no idea, you, you, you have no idea. You know what this does? This gets you ready. It prepares your heart. It gets you ready. And, and, and uh, I, I had this happen over and over again. God's given me stuff before I needed it. Uh, it, it's so important, but, but the only time he's done that is when I've been dependent upon him. And I've come to him realizing that by myself I can do nothing. I, if the Holy Spirit of God does not uh, open my heart and open my eyes, I won't be able to understand it. And then the second thing you need is a, a right heart. And a right heart is a heart that has sin confessed, and it's a heart that's dependent. Dependent on God and willing to respond to God and whatever he might speak to you about. And it's, it's, it's a... It's of utter importance to have, have a right heart uh, when you come to the Bible. And then, along with that, have a believing heart. Not just be right with him, but when he shows you something, just believe it, trust it. Have a believing heart. Have a heart that will just trust that what he says is true, uh, whether, whether or not circumstances point to it or not. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3. Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3.
Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 18 and 19. Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine or in its excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now keep your finger there and go with me over to Colossians 3. And look in verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or, or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Do you notice how similar those two passages were, particularly uh, cha chapter uh, uh, 5 of Ephesians 18 and 19, and then chapter 3 of Colossians, verse 16. That's because those two things go hand in hand, the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Uh, in one it says, be filled with the Spirit, and the other one it says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. The Spirit of God and the filling by the Spirit of God, the, con the, the, the controlling of the Spirit of God in your life, makes it possible for you to have your heart full of the Word of God, for the, the, the Word of God to dwell in you richly. It can, you know, we talk, we talk so much uh, about, I think oftentimes, uh, having the fullness of the Spirit, having God control us when, when we're doing, doing His work. Can I tell you? Reading the book is doing his work. Uh, getting an understanding out of the word of God is, is, is doing what God wants you to do. And you can't do it. And you can't get out of it what God wants you to get out of it outside of the spirit of God. And the spirit of God, uh, one of the reasons why we need to be filled with the spirit is so that the word of, of, of Christ can dwell in us richly. Um, in closing, go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Look with me down in verses uh, 20 and 21. Last two verses of the chapter. It says, knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now that tells me two important truths. Number one, the Spirit of God is the author of this book. Now we say, I understand, we say, well, Peter wrote this. It was Peter's epistle. Uh, uh, it was uh, John's writing of the, the uh, book of Revelation. It was Paul's epistle to the uh, Colossians. I understand we use that terminology, but the bottom line is this. They're not the ones that, that actually authored it. The Spirit of God did. The Spirit of God gave it by inspiration. And then secondly, he's not only the author, but because he's the author... He's the one that can give you the interpretation. He's the one that can give you the understanding. It says that no, no, no uh, prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What, what does that mean? You can't interpret it outside of the help and the assistance and the enlightening of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God gives us what we need in order to be able to understand the book, get application to the book. He brings things to our remembrance. Uh, how many times uh, have, I, have I gotten down and, and read a scripture? In fact, I've got, got some of these uh, references. I would recommend that you would um, write in your Bible. When, when you're reading one passage and another verse comes to mind, go check it out. You say, well, I'm right in the middle of my Bible reading. Stop. <laughs> okay, go check it and see how the two mesh together. Here's the thing. You got 66 books, but you know what? It's one book. 
It's one book because it's got not, not a bunch of authors, not 40 different authors, it's got one author. And that author is the Holy Spirit of God. And he'll take Scripture with Scripture, put them together, and give you the right meaning and give you the right interpretation. Any questions or comments before we go to Lord and pray? Got any questions, comments, uh, maybe a illustration of how you've seen the, the Spirit of God do that in your own life. Okay? Yeah, David. Uh huh. No. Yep. Isn't uh, isn't the, isn't uh, in Jude? Isn't the book of Enoch? Isn't it Jude? Book of Enoch is mentioned. Where's the book of Enoch? Who knows? And I don't mean to be irreverent, all right? But who cares? <laughs> because obviously God didn't necessarily want us to have that. He gave us these books. He's preserved these books. And you look at, at just the history of the Bible and how God kept it and watched over it throughout the ages. I mean, it's... What you're holding in your hands is, is absolutely amazing. But that's because it's divine. That's because the Holy Spirit's the author. Any others? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that Jesse? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't see your head. All I saw was your hand. I wasn't sure. Take your mask off so we can hear you. There you go. Yeah. That verse, uh, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The reason why you keep his commandments isn't because you have to. It's not because God's got a stick over your head and going to beat you bloody if you don't. You ought to be doing it because you love him. And when you love him, he'll show special love back to you and he'll manifest himself to you. And again, that's all the heart. All of it's the heart. Anyone else? All right. Grab your prayer list, if you would.